In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure GNS3 on a VMware ESXi. Now, one of the best places to go, as always, for information is the documentation page on the GNS3 website. So click on documentation and then do a search for ESXi. There's a link to installing the GNS3 VM on ESXi, which is very good, as well as information about how to troubleshoot KVM on ESXi. So the documentation provides good information on how to set this up. So let's start with installing the GNS3 VM on ESXi. We told that ESXi and VMware Workstation are two separate products. ESXi is a lightweight hypervisor that you typically install on a bare metal server. In this example, I'm actually nesting ESXi within a VMware Workstation just to make the video recording easier. But in the real world, you would install ESXi directly on a server. So VMware ESXi is the operating system that's installed on a physical server rather than running Windows and then VMware Workstation and then GNS3 within VMware Workstation. What you are doing is installing ESXi directly on a bare metal or physical server so ESXi is your lightweight operating system that hosts the VMs. So in this example, my ESXi server has an IP address of 192.168.1.1.1.4 and I have a GNS3 VM configured on the ESXi server. You can also use a web browser to access the ESXi server rather than using the VMware client. So once again, here's my ESXi server, and we could upload or deploy an OVF or OVA file to the ESXi server. That's what we're gonna download from GNS3 and upload to the ESXi server. Now, the reason for doing this is that you can use a very powerful server to host your GNS3 VM. You run the client on your Windows or Mac as an example, and have the GNS3 VM running on your ESXi server so that you can leverage the memory and processing power of that server. GNS3 provides a VM for ESXi. It has Ubuntu pre-installed and GNS3 is pre-configured on the VM. However, note that GNS3 does not control ESXi and by default ESXi will limit what GNS3 can do. So you need to configure ESXi to allow GNS3 to run properly. Basically, we need to enable nested virtualization on ESXi. It's also recommended that you know how to use GNS3 using a local GNS3 VM before you attempt to use GNS3 with ESXi. This is a more complicated installation. Now in this document, ESXi 6.5 is covered and Julian explains how to upload and configure ESXi using the web interface. The GNS3 VM is known to work with ESXi 5.5 and 6.0, but the way that you configure the servers is different. So you need to look at the documentation for your individual release of ESXi to determine how to configure what is demonstrated here. In this example, I'm also using ESXi 6.5, which is the latest release that I could download at the time of this recording. Now here's a warning. VMware fixed the bug related to GNS3 after the official release of 6.5, so make sure to apply all updates. You especially need to have the last version of the web interface installed. That's shown here on the VMware website. So the first thing you need to do is download the GNS3 VM. We're told to go to this document for the download links. This gives us various links to download the GNS3 VM. And specifically, we're gonna to go to GitHub to get the GNS3 VM. 
Now, at the time of this recording, the latest release of GNS3 is version 2.0.0, release candidate 1. So I'm going to go to my Windows PC and I'm going to download the GNS3 VM for ESXi. So note in this version, I'm not downloading the workstation version or the virtual box version. I'm specifically downloading the ESXi version, which is about 300 meg in size. So while that's downloading, I'll go back to the documentation. The next step is to import the VM into ESXi. And you can do that by using the web interface. So Julian has shown the steps here where you open up the web interface and create a new VM. And then you deploy the virtual machine using an OVF or OVA file. You need to call the VM, GNS3 VM, and upload the files using your web browser. You then select the data store, choose whether you want to use thin or thick provisioning, and then the disks are uploaded. In this example, I'm going to do the same steps, but use the vSphere client. I've already got an older version of the GNS3 VM running on my ESXi server. So I'm going to rename this old. And what I'll do now is go to my downloads directory. So here's the ESXi zip file that was downloaded. I'm going to extract all the files. And we can see that the zip file contains an OVA. So through the vSphere client, I'm going to deploy an OVF template. I'm going to browse to where I downloaded the OVA and click Open, and then click Next. The OVF template states that the VM will be called GNS3. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to keep the name as GNS3. And in my example, I'm going to use thin provisioning to save on disk space and click Next. We're told that the OVF is ready to be deployed. I'm going to click Finish. So at this point, the OVA is being uploaded to ESXi. You simply need to wait for that process to complete. That's now successfully uploaded, so I'm going to click Close. I'm going to select the GNS3 VM and then go to Edit Settings. And here's an example, we could increase the amount of RAM that we're going to allocate to the VM. We could also increase the number of CPUs. This is the advantage of using ESXi and a very powerful server, rather than trying to run everything on your local computer. This could also be used in the cloud as an example, if you want to leverage cloud-based resources. I'm going to click OK and I'm gonna power on the virtual machine. The GNS3 VM will boot up, and as you can see here, I'm using GNS3 version 2.0.0 RC1. The IP address of the server is 192.168.1.8, and notice here's a problem. KVM support is not available. Now I can also view that kind of information through the web browser. So as an example, if I click the GNS3 VM, and open up a monitor, I see similar kind of information. Version is 2.0.0, KVM support is not available. That is a problem. We want to enable KVM support on the GNS3 VM so that we can run QMU-based appliances such as iOS V, iOS V Layer 2, and the ASA. So fortunately, in the documentation, Julian tells us that this is a problem and we need to enable nested virtualization. And the instructions to enable this are available in this document. We told that we should stop the VM and then edit the settings. So through the VMware web interface, I'm going to shut down the GNS3 VM. That's now shut down. And I'm going to click Edit to edit the settings. Select CPU, and then I'm going to select this option, Expose Hardware Assisted Virtualization to the Guest OS. 
That's once again shown in the GNS3 documentation. I'm going to click Save. And then I'm going to start up the VM again. So the GNS3 VM is now booting. And now notice the difference. KVM support is available. That's what we want. We want KVM support once again because we want to support nested virtualization to allow QMU devices to run on this GNS3 VM, such as iOS V and iOS V Layer 2. So now we've configured the server side, we now need to configure the GNS3 GUI. I hope you found this video useful. If it's been of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.